Good afternoon, good morning. Well, welcome to your mid-show of the day, your mid-show of the week. It is, of course, Crafters TV. And this whole week, with it being our first full week on Crafters TV in 2023, it is New Year, New Craft. Now, on Monday, we had Sarah and Ben. They were having a look at all things die-cutting. And then yesterday, it was uh, Leanne and Ben. They were looking at all things stamping and colouring when it comes to alcohol mediums and water-based mediums. Today, it is all about mixed media. So we are going to delve in to two hours worth of mixed media wonderfulness. Now, we did actually kind of give you a preview within Wake Up Call, where we pretty much filled the two hours with mixed media as well. But if you didn't see that, you think, who can we have when it comes to mixed media? You know, we all love it, we're all dabbling in it, but there's just one person that we just learn so much. There is only one Jan Brown. Thank, Hi, Jan. Go thank goodness for that. I dread to think what it'd be like if there were more than one of me, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> my husband would, would disagree with that big time. No, it is great to be back. Honestly, my first day back after the sort of new year, after a, a barrage of illness over Christmas. And just a quick thank you to everybody out there, because I put a post on yesterday and was overwhelmed with the amount of people sending get well wishes and things like that. So thank you, guys. We really do appreciate all that input uh, but we're all good we're all fighting fit I've put it behind me and raring to go and what better show to come back with the new year honestly new year new craft we've got all sorts of different mediums today and my job today is to show you how we can integrate those into our paper crafting life kind of thing so we've got lots of, a lot of watercolor mediums um, I showed you some of the alcohol mediums earlier and the gilding wax things like that so we're, we're just going to take it through I'm going to show you lots of techniques and then I'm also going to put them into finished projects because I'm quite aware that we often talk about making backgrounds mm -hmm. but then what do you do with yeah. them when you've yeah. made them so we're actually going to use them and make them as finished projects because we tend to think of Wednesday as our sort of taking it a bit back more to basics on a Wednesday for the beginners out there whether it's a beginner in crafting journey whether it's a beginner to mixed media yeah. or anything like that whether it's you know you're new to crafters tv uh, so yeah just stripping it back a little bit and, and sort of taking some time to demonstrate it yeah. today Today. It's going to be good. So just at my street. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it really is. We we'll all love we'll love wake up calls, so we know we're going to love the next two hours for sure. We've got Rebecca on the comments for this New Year New Craft Mixed Media show. We've got um, uh, Joe is in saying hello from South Dakota. We've got Michelin is in saying hello from Lee's Acres, Florida. We've got Jill is saying hi from North Yorkshire. Mary Doyle is in saying hi everyone from Minnesota. Excited to see the demos from Jan. Evelyn saying good morning from Chile, Colorado. We've got Laura saying, Jan, Jan, Jan. We could keep going. We could keep going. Jan, 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 Jan. Val is saying, hi, Craig and Jan. Looking forward to the show, Val in Southampton. Absolutely, I am as well. What I would say is we're going to have a little bit of a look as to what we are going to be featuring within this show, of course. If uh, you go across on the website, that's where you're going to see everything. Now, usually, and I'm still going to see it, have a look at Shop the Day, because you're going to find everything from from Wake Up Call and then Mixed Media Show and then later on Beautiful Beginnings on Shop the Day. However, if you go into that gorgeous photo of Debbie Fisher just at that bottom left hand corner, we've got a new section for the day and it says Mixed Media. Now guess what's going to be behind that little box? It's all going to be items that you could be using when it comes to your mixed media. If you have got that little red sticker to the side of it, that means that you could get up to 23% off on a selection of all these items here. Now, there's star stamps, there's dies, there's cardstock, there's uh, some folders, there's some waxes there, there's got some tools. There is loads there that you're going to be finding from the mixed media realm. However, what you can still do is in that base section there with all the different boxes that you can click on if you're going to shop all then it means you'll see everything but within that section there you've got up to 23% off on that section because of course we are in 2023 uh, so between there shop the date these are going to be the best ones to you uh, for you to look at crafterscompanion.co.uk.com or .eu and there you will find our showstopper collection. Now, this is a 10-piece showstopper collection for mixed media. So maybe you're dabbling into mixed media for the first time. Maybe you are then going to start to really hone in the craft 
of mixed media or maybe you just want them for top up elements within your crafty stash you can use them for that today you're going to get these this whole bundle for 40 pound or 60 dollars that's giving you a saving of 40 percent incredible if you're platinum that's going to come down even more to 32 pound or 48 dollars now you're going to get your full pad of premium watercolor cardstock it is 9 by 12 it's 300 gsm so any of those water based mediums that you like to use and you'll see jan using you can absolutely use that you're also going to be getting your four pack of your water spritzers you're then going to be getting your round blending tool with the two replacement heads you're also going going to get the egg shaped blending tools as well. When it comes to the paint markers, you're going to get a four pack, which is the dual tones. You're going to get your silver gilded wax, the tricolor aqua pens, it is the floral meadow, three pens there, gives you nine colors. You've got your Spectrum Noir re inker which is blue black, which is TB9. Your Cosmic Shimmer pearlescent watercolor ink is cerulean blue. That's uh, 20 mil, and then you're also going to get your Cosmic Shimmer Pigment Satin, which is Citrus Lime. That one, I can absolutely say, just perfectly. So all of that is what you're going to be getting for £40 or $60. You've got that saving of 40%. You can see it on the screen. You're saving $27.16 or $42.28. But once again, if you are, of course, uh, Platinum, then that's going to come down to £32 or $48. Then something that was very, very, very busy within Wake Up Call this morning, and I think a lot of you are using these to store your mixed media items, or maybe you're just wanting a top up when it comes to our stash and stack collection here. <laughs> now, this is the, you kind of emphasise the <laughs> mm on that one there, <laughs> multi store. This is a three pack star buy. Now, if you're familiar with these, just to say you don't get the dividers inside. It's just the box. However, you can absolutely use these to store an abundance of items. Now, this easily fits your 9x12 or your flower form and foam packs if you want to. And then you've got a really nice depth to it. If you've still got dividers left over from previous ones you've bought, you can absolutely use them, no problem at all. The circles in the base, that's not there for just a pretty pattern, that is there to serve a purpose, and that's going to give it extra strength and stability along the bottom. So if you are starting to put heavy items in there, it's not going to bend and buckle and sag underneath. Now you are getting three of these empty stash in stacks. So you can see here, even if you do want to use it as storage without the dividers, you can do. You can see as an example, this is what we've done. All three of them are empty boxes that you've got, but you've still got that really strong lock on each side. They are uh, stash and stack because you can do exactly that. You can stash your items in them and stack them on top. It works out that you're buying two, you're getting one for free. $15.98 or $25.98, that's your saving of over 30%. But if you're platinum, all three of them, and I think this is why, Jan, it was very, very busy within Wake Up Call, all three are £12.78 or $20.78. Again, it's That's a no-brainer, isn't it? It yeah. really is. If you is. buy a new stash, it's always good to have something to store it in, isn't it? it and is. I'm speaking from experience because I've got stash scattered all over the place that doesn't have enough storage. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Terrible. Always using them. You know, craft room, bedroom, the kids' room, maybe you've got a he shed or a she shed or the makeup room or whatever it is that you've got, these are going to work perfectly for any of your storage for sure. And then the other thing that we've got today that we're going to have a look at, this is our tri-colour aqua pens by Spectrum Noir. Now, you are going to get the four packs. I'm going to show you the pens, first of all, because you've got your essential, essential neutrals. You've also got your colour basics. You've also then got your great outdoors. And in this one, I want to point out your floral meadow. Now, that is the one that you will also get within that showstopper deal. So just keep that in mind. You know, if you want to go for both, then you will get a duplicate of that floral meadow. But do you know what? Nice as a little kind of um, extra that you've got or gift that gift that to a friend or family member or you know give it as a gift to a crafter or craft class up to you but that one you would duplicate if you were to go for the showstopper 
and this one. So that one there, you're getting all four of them. So let's just show you what these look like when it comes to the color basics. They're tri-color aqua pen, so that means that they're water-based, so you can pull that color out when it comes to water. We've also got our essential neutrals. Now, when it comes to these ones with them being water-based, you can start to mix and blend. You can add a variety of different mediums to these ones here. Nice to use your clear sparkle overlay pens when it comes to these instead of water. But all four of them, £27.50 or $41.50. If you are platinum, that's then going to come down to £22 or $33.20. All of this, so much more, is across on the website. Just head across to crafterscompanion.co.uk.com or .eu. Find it in, shop the day, or of course, if you want to look at these specific mixed media items that Jan's been looking at, you'll find them in that uh, New Year New Craft section as well. We've, uh, we've got Valen, we've got Evelyn is saying hi Craig and Jan from CTV crew. We've got Jill saying, oh, Jan's got her apron on, it's going to be messy. <laughs> Jamie said the same, we've got Jamie and we've got Charlotte in the gallery. Just before we went live and Jan popped her apron on, Jamie was like, I think we're going to get messy. That's the best way, it's the fun way. Then we've got Karen saying hello again from Kentucky. Deborah's saying greetings from Texas. Happy hump day. Well, happy hump day to you, but there's no hump about today in this place. There Not really at isn't. All. We're all fun and happy and cheery and all uh, ready for our mixed media. Zoe's in, Coletta's in, Cindy's in, and uh, Cara's saying hi all. I love the re ink and Jan Dunn. I've just bought the re inkers to go with the previous stash I bought before Christmas. Um, and can't wait to get started with inks and papers. You're going to have a lot of fun. You really, really are. Joan's in, Liz R's in, and Carol's in as well, saying hi, Jan. Love your shows. Nice to see you on. Isn't it just? really is lovely when we've got Jan on. If there's anything that you want to uh, say to Jan, you know, send the comments in. As I say, we've got Rebecca on for this show and I will send them and read them out. Right, Jan, where are we going to start? Right, I'm just going to sneak something in before we start. Just okay. going back to what you've just said about people buying the alcohol reinkers. Uh, if you were watching earlier, I actually used the isopropyl alcohol as an extender. So I'm just going to pop that there for anybody that wants to take a screenshot because this is not actually one of our products. This is just off. If you type this in on a search engine or one of the, you know, the online stores, uh, most places to sell it so I thought I'd just leave it there because like if people are buying the inkers mm -hmm. and they want to yeah. do the technique that I did Good idea. Um, then you can just as I say access this on many many places on the internet and this is exactly the same as the one that I use at home okay so I'll pop that to one side now and then we're actually going to have a look at those tricolor markers okay so I've just pulled three of them out of that four pack collection so if you're buying those as a collection you'll have all these combinations of colors now i've got um predominantly blues in the first one so we've got teal aquamarine and lake blue and i'm going to use the middle one which is the aquamarine right. i've got then predominantly greens so we've got bud green meadow and verdant green and i'm going to use the bud green out of that one and then i've also got this i love this sort of warm tone one we've got gold crimson and sunset and we're going to use the gold so we're going to have a combination of aqua the green and the yellow for my color palette now nice. again you know you can mix any colors together if you're not sure about how the color system works the pens that have got a different set of color so for example we've got red yellow and orange on this one you're fairly certain that these three colors will look great together yeah. so if you're not so confident with you know which colors to pick then use the ones that have got the multi colors in them because they've been chosen specifically for colors that will work nicely together obviously these two are shades of one color family yeah. so we've got blues and greens in this one but a lot of them have got three separate colors in and you'd be fairly guaranteed that those will look fine if you chose to use those three together i'm going to come back to the paper again and I mentioned this if you were watching earlier that the majority of the work that I'm going to do on as far as watercolour techniques are concerned I'm using wa uh, watercolour paper from that premium pad and we've popped one of these in that starter kit for you so if you are sort of treating yourself to that little bit of everything today this is what you're going to get and lovely 9 by 12 really nice quality watercolour paper now if you don't have this and you buy our ordinary watercolour paper that comes in 15 sheet packs 
it works just the same this is not quite it's a little bit smoother if, if you're used to watercolor paper you'll know that it's got a slight pitting on the surface a little bit like orange peel this one's slightly smoother than the one that we sell in the set of 15 sheets but they both work absolutely fine so some of you may have seen this technique before I apologize but I know we're getting so many new crafters join us yeah. every day and obviously the new year new craft is sort of aimed at maybe somebody trying something that they haven't done before so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in the watercolor markers yeah. now these will go straight onto paper if you wish to colour with them they've got a really nice brush tip on them so the fine element of that tip will get into all those little tiny places and then you've got the thicker part of the nib if you're colouring you know bigger spaces mm -hmm. personally I think that's a little bit of a waste of your ink and that's only my opinion Leanne might totally disagree with me I don't know but I just think putting them direct to paper you're probably using more ink than you need to yeah so for example if you want to scribble a little bit of that ink out onto a surface so if you've got a glass mat it's a great one to use if you don't have a glass mat you can use a ceramic tile or a piece of acetate anything that's non-porous that will hold that ink and just leave it there and pick it up either with a paintbrush, slightly damp paintbrush, or I think you mentioned earlier, Craig, what I like to do is use my um, sparkle pen. Mm -hmm. So um, your crystal clear sparkle pen, all right, just happens to have that lovely brush nib on. And when you pick the colour up and use it with that, you're going to get that interference from the sparkle. So you get a sparkly colour as well. So if that's the look that you're going for, I like to use that quite a lot if I'm painting and colouring. You can also do your wash techniques with it where we just use it across the card, a bit like we have done with sparkle mm -hmm. inks and the aqua tints and things like that. Again, picking it up from the surface. What I'm actually going to do today is bring in the glycerin. And I've actually done this technique, as I say, many times. And again, I'll just hold that where people can see it. I don't want it to leak. But it actually says vegetable glycerin on this one. You don't need a cooking quality glycerin. Okay. You'll pay a lot more for it and it's not necessary just cheap as chips veggie stuff I often get mine in the chemist to be honest and you'll find it around where the cough medicines are because it's an ingredient in cough medicine but what this does is allow you to work with the ink and keep it open for longer now it has just dribbled a little bit there so I'm just going to check that bottle I didn't like being tipped up there just to say Jan I'll do what I've done in wake up call and any of the, the items you're using Charlotte's going to pop them on the screen uh, yep. for you to look at but I'm not going to jump in each time because I don't want to jump in on your demo you can so. jump in whenever you wish my darling you know that there. no I'm just like everyone at home I get engrossed in what you are doing <laughs> so if you want anything specific you'll see it popping up on the screen or of course it's on the website or we'll have a recap once Jan's done so what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my three colours that I've chosen to work with, and we might need to refresh them, but uh, I'll just pop a block of them out as if I've got a colour palette. Okay, and then I decant my glycerin, because that big container was massive, I decant it into a little bottle. I've just got a drop left in here uh, just to take with me, and I've, I, I've, it's got a little tiny dot on it, oh, so yeah. that I know that it's my glycerin and it's not right, something okay. else, yeah? Uh, a, and all you tip. need is a tiny, tiny, less than... Here in the UK, I would say less than a five pence piece. Now, as far as the US is concerned, is it, is it the dime or the cent? I can never remember which one's the smallest, but smaller than your smallest coin. I think it's a cent, isn't it, that's the smallest denomination? I think so. But yeah, you can see I've got tiny little blobs of it here, probably about less than a centimetre across. You don't need a lot. And then I actually allocate a set of my sponge applicators with the colours on and I keep them in a little bag because the glycerine is sort of a wet product and by keeping them in the bag it just stops them drying out and gives them a bit more longevity mm -hmm. so I'll easily, usually just keep the colours together and I keep sort of all the the cooler colours together in one bag and the warmer colours in the other bag. I've Great just pinched idea. the yellow because I was using it today. So what I've done is I've taken a piece of that watercolour paper from the pad and cut it down to a size that I'm going to work with. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to soak up the glycerin first and work it into my sponge applicator. 
and what that does if I picked up the ink now I'd get into the corner of here and it would just dry up because the ink would soak into the paper and it's not going to go anywhere they're not designed in that way but by adding the glycerin it it keeps it what's called open for longer so in artist terms it's basically keeping it wetter for longer and it allows you to then move it about okay so let me show you what I mean have I got another piece of let me just take a piece off here the little dots that you've done of the glycerin it also reminds me you know the larger size of the dewdrops yes that do. they look just like them don't yeah, they, they do. yeah, yeah. That's let nice me just take another piece out of there and I'll show you I think sometimes it's better if I can show you what I actually mean so if I was to take some of the yellow off here now and just work it into here and start to work with it you see this has actually got glycerin still in it so it is moving a little bit but it's not going to go very it's actually running out already it's, it's you see look it's not coming any further than that corner very much yeah okay. it's gone on a little bit but then now I'm not able to move it it's just it's stopped there watching. by adding in the glycerin so what I'm actually going to do to pop a little bit more of that yellow on there because I'm going to need it back in my applicator the first thing I'm going to do is just dab the glycerin and then work it really sort of squelch it round and push it into that sponge applicator really in there. okay so you've really embedded it in here you can't see it it's just disappeared and it's soaked into here and then pick up your ink so I'm going to load the applicator with that ink out of the pen as well okay and then this time we're actually going to start and look how it travels oh wow oh gosh what so it starts to behave like an ink out of an ink pad okay now I tend to work in sort of sets of three okay that coverage is phenomenal as honestly well. you wouldn't believe that this has come out of a pen every time I do this technique it just it, it still amazes me mm -hmm. because just by adding that one product it just makes it go so much further it really okay does. So it's, your pens are going to last, you know, quite a long time. Well, that's it, because you've not, you've not used a lot of that ink Not whatsoever. at all, just scribbled a little bit out. And then I keep a separate, app, a separate applicator for each one. But if you don't have that many applicators, don't forget that your blue and your yellow will make you green. Mm -hmm. So you could do a little bit of each and work it in that way. So again, each time mop up that glycerin first work it really push it sort of all the way around so that you're working it into your sponge you want it sort of nice and even not just dabbing it and having a blob in the middle no. because that way only the middle part of your sponge is going to work so really work it in then pick up that ink get it into your applicator so you've now got it ready to go and then we're going to come in at a different place and start and add some of that second color into our design Okay, so oh, decide, decide where you, and again, there's no, no pattern to this, you know, whatever works. I often work in threes, but then realize that I've only got two spaces left <laughs> and it doesn't really matter. We're going to blend them all together when we've done anyway. And then last one, same again. I usually dab it all in first and then proper push it on your surface and work it right into the sponge. Pick up the ink. And then we're going to go into those last spaces. So even going right into the centre of the card, I've not got a circle printed from that ink. Now, don't worry about where they overlap at the second. We're going to go back to that in a minute. So again, just do that last corner. And even when you were applying the blending tool with the ink on the glass mat, with that glycerin, it really kind of soaked into that foam really quickly yes. you know that yeah. was just like just a couple pushing of it in yeah it doesn't in. take long at all and then what i tend to do is go back down my colors so i did the blue last i'm going to go back to the green and where the blue and green overlap just give it an extra nudge so again at this side where the blue and green overlap and then go back to the first color which was the yellow and where those overlap again just move it about so that you get in that sort of seamless blend rather than a, a definite edge yeah, where it really uh, it finishes now what you need to be careful of is you might be able to see where i've had my finger it's actually drawn a little bit of the ink so just try and be careful and maybe use a, a piece of kitchen towel if you can so that you're not actually drawing because mm -hmm. it's still a little wee bit wet you'll sometimes pull it back off 
and I'm fighting a losing battle now because every time I touch it, I'm, yeah, we'll stop there. Okay, so I'm going to put those straight back in my little packet so that that glycerin doesn't waste. And you'll probably get another application out of those. You don't necessarily have to renew the glycerin every time you use them if you keep them protected. Yeah. Okay. So put those under there for a second. Right, so this is still a little tiny bit wet, but not wet enough that it's a problem because what I'm going to do now is pop it in one of our embossing folders. So again, remember I said the mixed media was all about layers. So this time we're going to pop it in an embossing folder and it doesn't matter if your card's slightly damp when you use the embossing folders, you get a nice crisp finish. So this was part of that set, Craig. I think we had three of them on that. Uh, we used the long, thin one this morning. This is the intricate filigree, which is a five by seven 3D folder. And again, beautiful. It's got that, that sort of work around the edge. And then like Craig said earlier, there is actually a little space where you could pop a sentiment inside. So again, we're gonna pop this in. Doesn't matter which way around it goes. Um, we'll go that way. So again, I've cut it slightly smaller. Right. It's just the size that I want for my project there. And just lay it inside. Just make sure when you're doing anything like this that you've got your folder the right way round. And what I mean by that is you want the raised surface underneath. So have a feel. And where it's raised, that's the bit that's going to push up through your card. So if you do it the wrong way, you're going to get a deboss effect. Mm -hmm. Now, that might be what you want. There's no right or wrong with it. But I actually want the embossing to push up through here because then we're going to add a third layer to it. So again, pop that in. And then I'm going to bring the MIDI back across. I love the MIDI for the 3D folders because like, no, you've not got to think that. about it. It literally just goes through. So depending on the size, Either your MIDI or those panels that we were using this morning will go through your mini as well. And then we've got that lovely transference of design. So there's nothing come out in the folder, even though I said it was still a little bit damp. The folder's clean. Clean, yeah. But we've got that beautiful 3D embossing on there as another layer now. So you've got your colour in the background. Then we're bringing that 3D element in as a second layer. And then I'm going to go back to the old gilding wax again. OK, whenever I've done embossing, I like to either go over it with ink or with the gilding wax just to emphasize the embossing, unless you're wanting to do sort of white on white for a specific, you know, if it's a wedding card or something like that. I like to just sort of enhance. Now, it might be that you use those sponge applicators and if you've got ink left in them, just go over the relative colors with the applicators. But in this, this example, we're going to go in and again, I'm just using that King Gold. You can use any of your colours. This just happens to be my favourite. And where we've got that sort of raised area now, if you just feel, and I can only stress with this, that the lighter the touch, the better. You can always go and add more to bring out that design, but once it's there, it's not easy to get rid of. Mm -hmm. So really nice and light to start with, so you can see where those areas are. And then that main part of the design here, I'm going to add a bit more to to make that quite heavy and pronounced. So again, just really lightly to bring out that background detail. So this is all sort of that sort of like second layer of embossing. And then we've got those pieces that are much more pronounced, yeah. which I'm going to put a bit more heavier. That technique colour. that you've done with the, with the glycerin, Jan, would that work with any other mediums like sparkle pens or any other water base or is it really just aqua pens? I wouldn't add it to sparkle pens uh, purely because you're working with the glitter as well. Got you. Uh, so you shouldn't need to. They should move quite freely. Mm -hmm. um, anything that's got additional elements in, I wouldn't be messing around adding glitter into it. It's just with this being pure ink that you're going to get that sort of flexibility with it. I wouldn't want to damage the... Uh, the sparkle inks and as I say with that glitter in there you've got a different medium that you're working with with the um, the glitter pens good to know so again just where we've got that extra element and as I say once you've highlighted the areas you can see by adding that bit more detail and just going over it brings out that embossing but to do it heavy to begin with and get a finger splodge on it I was a little bit heavy with that one there it's not something that you can get rid of very easily. So again, I'm just going to wipe up that surplus. 
what's done for me anyway, in my eyes, going over with that embossing in the Gildan wax, it's even it's enhanced those uh, colours, yep. that little bit more, the yeah. blue, the yellow, the green. It just seems to be more enhanced having gone over with a layer of the gold wax. So again, I don't know what's in the baby wipes, but it's very good at taking wax off non-porous surfaces. And as I say, if it does get a bit stubborn, if you've got our stick away, the aerosol, that will emulsify the wax and get rid of it even better. So again, just make sure we've got a nice clean surface. So we've got three layers now. We've actually got our coloured background, which started out on the white card. Then we've had the embossed layer and then we've added some of the gilding wax. Now, don't remember, if, don't forget, if you were watching earlier when I said all the gilding wax will benefit from a little bit Good of a puff. buff. So a nice smooth cloth, doesn't want to be too textured, and just buff it up and you'll get a really nice soft sheen to it. Doesn't damage the card, it doesn't stay wet long enough for it to be a problem, but you'll just get that really nice sort of sheen to it then. Can you see? You can, can't look at that. Yep. Right, so what else can we do to it then? You know me, I don't like just sticking at that. So what I did was start chopping things up again. You know that I like chopping things yeah, up. So this like is the one up. that I did. Just cut it down slightly to fit my project. And I've cut it into two pieces. So you can see we've got that same effect. Cut into, I've just added some ribbon as part as to begin the embellishment sort of process. But I just wanted to split it to use it in a different way. If this is your background, absolutely fine. You could actually cut an aperture in here Mm -hmm. Now, if you're going to do that, do that before you do the embossing. So if you're going to use, for example, an oval die and cut an aperture, do the die cutting first and then the embossing. Purely because if you emboss first and then die cut, the second run through the machine is going to flatten your embossing. All right, so die cut your, your aperture first, then emboss it, and then you could actually put something behind it. So lots of different ways. But all I'm going to do with this one again is keep it nice and simple today. We've got that gold card again because I've used the gold wax. I'm just going to mat and layer onto some of that gold card just to bring out that focus. And I do like matting and layering. I know you like your matting and layering, Craig. I do. It just, it adds. just adds and focuses those main pieces and just gives it, it just draws your eye in, I think, does, rather than it? just putting that piece on. If I put those on there like that, separate, absolutely fine. No problem. If that's where you want to go with it, absolutely fine. But then if you bring that second layer in and just cut to pop your mat behind it, it just seems to lift it and it focus it that little bit more. Yeah. So again, it's something that you can play around with if you're just starting out. And all I'm going to do is use that tape pen again because we're working onto the satin mirror card and just pop those and I think same as you Craig I tend to work in quarter of an inch increments yeah. yep. so my outside piece my gold piece will be a quarter of an inch extra in both dimensions to what I've got the pattern piece and then that just gives you a nice border around the outside again there's no rule that says no, it has to be quarter of an inch no. you know if you i know some people like the little eighth of an inch border and they just cut it you know sort of slightly different but it's up to you again play around with things like that and see sometimes if you're doing more than one mat layer it's nice to stagger the yes, borders and yeah. have a narrow one and then a thicker one so it's so many different ways of doing things and that's what i love about this craft there isn't really a right or wrong. No. There's only certain things that you need to be aware of, like we were talking about the difference earlier between alcohol inks and watercolour inks and how they behave. But in general, you know, you go with what you like. Exactly, of course you Or can. what you think the recipient would like if they're going to make, uh, you know, if you're making it for someone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the larger piece on the outside and then I'm going to put this piece and I've sort of cut it shorter at the front here. So I'm going to put this piece on the back so that when it's closed, it looks as if it's part of the design. But when it's open, you've still got some on the inside yeah. as well. So again, Clever. I like chopping things up. I don't know whether it's sort of going back to... So oh, I've never used a whole tape pen. Have you? <gasps> no, it's the... the I've, oh, I don't know what's happened there. So it's because we've just got a no. new one and wake up called it. No, we? that's if you use the new one, Jan, it's got a full roll of tape on. Ah. That's the one that was running out. Oh my days. I thought crack, I've never used a whole one of those. 
Yeah, let's use the one that Craig fetched, and we've got lots of tape on there. That threw me then for a second. I'm like, really? <laughs> that wasn't 22 meters. There we go, look. Yep, look so I've just that. made that, that one the right well. width to fit in there. And then all I've done is been in my stash of stamps, stamped out onto one of our nesting ovals and the little scalloped oval in the background, just added some decoration. And all I'm gonna do is pop this on the one half. So I've just popped some tape on because I'm going on to different mediums again. I'm just gonna overlap this across as if it's done across the whole thing, but it's only actually stuck on that one side. So it looks as if it's part of the design, but then when you open it. Now, if you want, if you don't want the green inside to write on, you could put a panel of white in here to stamp and pop your message on. Or if you've got, you know, sort of the metallic markers or anything like that, they look nice written in uh, on the colored backgrounds. So yeah, just nice and simple using that sort of layered design that we did at the beginning and incorporating it into a card design for you. It really is fab, how cool is that? Absolutely gorgeous, good way to use them all. All together, combining and creating your own background. And that one was used, uh, predominantly using the tricolour marker. So that's a four pack collection. Now it's 12 markers in total, however, within each pen. So basically, in each pack you're getting three pens. However, you are getting, of course, nine colours because each pen has three different colours. So you are going to get your essential neutrals. You're going to be getting your colour basics. You're also going to be getting your grey outdoors. And you're also going to get your floral meadow. Now, just be aware, if you are going to go for the showstopper today, then you also get a pack of the floral meadow in with the showstopper as well. So it's just one just to keep in mind for that one. But you can get all four. Essentially, it does kind of work out. If you're buying three, you're getting one for free. But that today's price is saving the 30%, £27.50, or $41.50. If you are platinum, that's going to then come down to £22 or $33.20 for all of those ones. So that's going to work really, really well. And you might actually replicate what Jan was doing. And you would be able to do that with our little Explorer kit. And I say little, so, so popular. This is Explorer kit where you've got 50% off. So this is your mixed media Explorer kit. Now this is giving you your 10 sheets of Centura Peril and you're getting a mix of embossing folders and cutting embossed folders with stamps as well. So we've got our candy cane. Now this came out with a Christmas collection. However, I use this more throughout the year than I do at Christmas time. It's a cutting emboss, so you've got the center aperture of the rectangle that cuts out. We've also got our 3D embossing folder from the Masquerade Ball. We've also got from the Sunflower Collection, Sunflower Splendor. So that is actually a create a card die that you've got there. And then from our duo 3D embossing folders, Bloom and, Bloom and Grow that we can see here. So that's two, two different designs within this one, but it is a 3D embossing folder. They're seven by two inches each. Then from Secret Garden, you're also going to get your Enchanted Door. So that's 11 elements in total, and that's giving you stamps and dies. And then you're also going to be getting a full pack of your Ivory Centura Peril. Now that is 10 sheets, and it's 310 GSM in total. So it's a really, really handy set to have. Just to say as well, to put it into perspective, so today's price is £30 or $35. The Centura Peril, the Candy Cane, and also your Enchanted Door, these three alone come to £29.97. So just under that £30 mark or for you guys stateside, it comes to $36.89. So just over the $35 mark. So these three plus, you're going to be getting these three as well for that incredible price of £30 or $35. Platinum price comes down to £24 or $28 as I knew so much love for what Jan's done already within the start of this show. We've got Bonetta saying hello everyone from Tennessee. We've got uh, uh, Crystal actually. So it's a good thing, but don't like hearing this, but a lot of people do say the same. Crystal is saying mixed media scares me, Jan. 
It does a lot of people. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? It does. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to come and do this today, to show you that it doesn't have to be difficult. Not at all. You know, a lot of people think mixed media is something big that they need to sort of work up to. Just mixing your medium. So I used some kind of colour with cardstock. I added um, uh, gilding wax with that one. We're going to use some of the other products as well. And that is enough to get you started on your mixed media journey. Then once you've mastered techniques like that, you can then start mm -hmm. and progress with it and you can take it as far or as, you know, as few as you want to. But don't be afraid of it. It doesn't mean anything fancy. It just means that you're working with something other than cardstock. So by adding in, you know, like I say, the solvent based waxes or a watercolour medium to add some colour, it just means that you mix in those different mediums. That's as simple as it is. Those of you that like working with our flower foaming foam, you're already mixing a medium, the foam with the cardstock. Definitely. In its simplest terms, that is mixed media. Doesn't have to be all singing and dancing. Please don't be afraid of it. And that's why I wanted to come and do these techniques for you today with things that you've probably got in your stash. Maybe, you know, sort of get the starter kit, which has got a little bit of everything in and then see which bits you like and then take it from there. Perfect. Uh, Deborah is saying, love the tips that Jan gave us, just as she done there a moment ago. Kim is saying, so happy to see Jan today. Who else would CC have to teach us mixed <laughs> media? Who else indeed? Beth, then, think a few of you would be saying the same. Think I need to go and buy some glycerin. Yeah, it's going to be handy within your crafty stash. Cindy, yeah, the tricolours, they are, they are aqua pens. So what you do with your aqua pens, you can do with these. These are aqua base. Then you've also got uh, Lisa saying, love the matting and layering. It elevates a piece so much. It does. Heidi is saying, I love Jan as a teacher. She has the most common voice and she convinces me that I can craft anything and her designs are fabulous. It's all about. It's just taking away that scared element of certain things such as mixed media. At the end of the day, it's a bit of cardstock. And if it goes wrong, it's not the end of the world. Mm -hmm. You know, you've either got something that you're going to throw in the bin or you can put stick another layer to it and start again. Or you could whitewash over it and start again. You know, it's not the end of the world. Please don't stress about it. I would just you know, try and convince people to have a go yeah. and have a go. You know, I've been doing this a long time. You know, my first attempts weren't perfect. It's still not. I've still got things to learn. You know, I can share with you what I've learned over the years. I don't class myself as being a professional at this at all. But it, it, it is literally a bit of cardstock. That's all you're working all with. Is. Yeah, it really, really is. Uh, we'll wait to uh, a little bit of a quick break. Just quickly, though, John, uh, Joan is asking, can the true black re be used to pop in my finesse ink pad don't want to mix the inks right is that the one in the starter kit so well see this one it is the uh, tb9 so the tr the where is it here i've got it written down TB9. yeah it's not actually the tb stands for true blue true blue so it's a blue black which means it's if it's number nine yeah. remember what i said about the lower numbers are the lighter shades of a color family and the, the higher numbers are darker so when you get up to like number nine mm -hmm. it's a very very dark shade of blue so the code tb is true blue yeah all right They've, they might have included black in the color but all that means is it's a very very dark black wouldn't go anywhere near your ink pads with it it's no. not that kind of refill all right um, it's made to refill if you look through if you have a whole collection of one of our pen sets of the illustrators for example that are refillable you'd need to go through all your tb colors which is the blue range and find the corresponding number to use that ink with otherwise you're going to alter the format of the colors in your pens and you're not going to have that spectrum of of color range right. yeah so Absolutely. match up those codes that's what they're there for Perfect, thank you yeah. so much. Uh, and then last but by no means least for now, Julie, absolutely, if you've got dividers from previous stack and stash boxes, yes, you can use it within these ones, no problem at all. Right, I know we've got so much that Jan wants to show us within this mixed media new craft, new year, new craft show. So we're going to give you uh, a couple of minutes to check out your baskets and then we're going to come straight back and we're going to dive in to more mixed media. Welcome to Club Inspire, the crafters companion community where you can feed your crafty obsession. 
Join our fantastic loyalty club today and receive 20% of your first order. We'll also give you 250 points to help get you started. Other benefits of joining Club Inspire include exclusive special offers and discounts for Club Inspire members only, exclusive sneak peek previews of brand new product launches, and of course the Club Inspire community group on Facebook where you can access exclusive content such as downloads, offers and inspiration and of course you can chat and share your makes with other members. You'll receive one point for every pound, dollar or euro you spend and the more points you receive, the more benefits you'll unlock. So what are you waiting for? Sign up, join the club and start rewarding yourself today. Who needs New Year's resolutions? Start the year with something you love with New Year New Craft. Resolutions are easy to keep if it's something you enjoy. And here at Crafters TV, we've got everything you need to kickstart 2023 with a brand new string to your creative bow. Join us for seven days of inspiration, creativity and new beginnings. Every day from Monday the 9th of January to Sunday the 15th of January will be completely dedicated to a different craft. So, if you've always wanted to refresh your creativity and try your hand at a new technique, this is your moment. We'll be taking a deep dive into die cutting and colouring, making an impression with stamping and mixed media, and exploring the world of sewing and needlecraft. Our expert team is here with everything you need to know to add another crafty string to your creative bow. And with a special show-stopping deal for every technique, you can dive in straight away. It's the perfect time for crafters of all abilities to brush up on new skills. So, tune into Crafters TV and head over to the Crafters Companion website for all the details and even more New Year New Craft inspiration. Make more of 2023 with New Year New Craft. Welcome to Crafters TV. With more than 35 hours of live shows each week, it's your home for all things craft. So, join our family of craft experts with live tutorials and demonstrations every day. We shine the spotlight on new and innovative crafting products here on Crafters TV. Get creative and craft along with our amazing deals. Your next craft project is only a click away. Tune in live seven days a week or watch on Catch Up at crafterscompanion.com, Facebook or our YouTube channel. You can chat to us, craft along, and meet new friends in our online crafting community. You entertain us, you give us a community to talk, you know, in the chat. That wouldn't happen without you guys. It's like, um, Crafters Companion is magical. There's magic here. You all have time with each other! <laughs> You're not through to boot camp. Get off! <laughs> There's a show for every type of crafter, from first-time dabblers to full-time makers. So, stop what you're doing and enjoy the fun here on Crafters TV. Right, we're going to have a look at a three for two just before we jump over to Jan and see what she's going to do next. And this is all about Cosmic Shimmer. Now, these ones here, these are your pearlescent watercolour inks. Now, you have got all of these. All of them are 20 mils. Now, each of them are £4.25 or $7.99. It is three for the price of two, as I was saying. Platinum price comes down to £3.40 or $6.39. You have got 11 that you can choose from. So we're going to start at this end here where we have got our red sun set. We've also got our cer cerulean blue. We've also got our holly green, radiant orchid. We've got ray of sunshine. We've got lemon glacier. We've got fiery sunset, nearly navy, passionately pink. We've got uh, spruce green and purple twilight. So that's the ones that you can choose from for $25 or $7.99 or £3.40 if you are platinum or $6.39. Each of these, of course, are across on our website, three for the price of two. And you can mix and match a few other items in the three for two as well. You may see some hunky dory shimmer mist as well that you can have a look at. So with these ones, Jan, another very, very versatile medium to be using. And they are, yeah. She says hiding from the camera. I'm just <laughs> delving in my bag for the one that we did this morning. Sorry about that, guys. 
I should have had that one ready. But yeah, if you're watching this morning on Wake Up Call, we actually made the background on this particular card using those beautiful pearlescent inks. So you can see how we've just basically mopped up the ink and we've got that lovely speckled background. So if you want it's to gorgeous. see how that one was made, you can have a look back at the 11 a.m. show this morning with Wake Up Call. And that was using um, Radiant Orchid, the pink. OK, so I'm going to bring that one back in again. Okay. And I'm also going to mix it with the green. So we're going to go pink and green with this one. So we've actually got beautiful sort of water-based inks in here and mica which gives us the most gorgeous pearlescent colour to work with. So what I've done is I've just grabbed one of the ones out of the, um, the box. And if you look at this now, I don't know whether we can actually see, we'll get our Charlotte to come a bit closer and just have a look at the ink in the bottle. It does look like watercolour ink. Oh, she's going in. That's literally all there is in the bottle there. OK, it's just got a little bit of glare, but you can see that green ink inside oh, it. Quite yeah. a translucent, but really well pigmented. And then if I turn it over, you can see there that mica in the bottom. Now, because the mica, or if you've got any product that's got glitter in it, is heavier than the water-based carrier, it's going to sink to the bottom. So these have all been stood in a, a tray and it's gone to the bottom. So all I've done in the break was just had a good go with mine. And you can see it started to settle again already. But there's a mixing ball inside. There's a little ball bearing. If you give them a really good shake, that agitates the mica. And you want to make sure that it's all gone. And then when you look at it again this time, if I, is our Charlotte still there? If you look at it this time, you can see all that swirly gosh, goodness. Look that. It looks totally different to gosh, just the translucent it? ink. This is the state that you want to work with it in. That's how they're made to work. So give it a really good shake. I've got both of them going. And then they come in the format where, again, if you can just see the top of the lid here, it's got like a little push element oh, yeah. in the top. That activates the dropper inside. So it's actually made almost with its own little pipette inside. So if I just bring this, you can see. Now, by depressing this, it sucks up the ink. Mm -hmm. So it's actually filled ink into the dropper. When I actually press it again, it will actually let that ink back out again. So it's a really good technique in that you don't need to add extra products. So what we're going to do with this this time, uh, on the show this morning, I actually brought my craft mat in and I popped the ink onto here and spritzed it with water and we basically mopped it up with the card. That's how we did the technique. What I'm going to do this time is I'm going to work onto the card. And again, this is that premium watercolour card. Your ordinary watercolour card will work as well. And I'm going to bring in my water. So I've just got plain tap water in the spritzer and I'm actually going to wet the card reasonably well. Now the card will always buckle when you add water to it, but the watercolour card's made to withstand it. So I've actually got, if I tip this, you can see it's, it's actually quite wet can't, now. Can't so don't worry about it buckling. You can always hold it down with something. But what I'm going to do, make sure the lid's on, Jan. Just make sure that that mic is distributed. And then press the dropper. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to drop elements of this onto here and then I'm going to take my brush this time and I've just got water in a pot here and start and can you see how it wicks into the, wow. the water that's on there so you're getting a different look to what we did this morning so just giving it a little nudge and it will start look it starts and it fascinates me it follows where the trails of water are and again you can get some really good sort of effects with it so again i'm going to put a certain amount of pink on here and if it doesn't move if it's not happening don't be afraid like this one's not done anything so there's maybe not as much water so just give it a spritz and you can see how this is actually starting and all i'm doing is just helping it cover yeah and pushing it into where that water is. It's kind of like you're agitating it, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, like, just sort on. of pushing it round. OK, we'll pop a little bit up here. I'm going to cover the whole of this. And then give your brush a rinse, and I'm going to swap it for the green. Just don't do so you can see how quickly that mica starts to settle. Can, so do yeah. remember to shake them. You might think, well, this is looking a holy mess at the minute, Jan, but just bear with me. So again, press the little dropper. And you can now start and add. It's absolutely, you know, looking at it here in the studio, it's so rich and luxurious. I can't sort of explain it. And again, 
I'm going to take the brush. If you've got any areas that aren't moving as you would like them, give them a little spritz. And again, I've just got a little bit of kitchen paper. So where you get, because the paper bows a wee bit, you'll always get that build up at the edges, but don't be afraid of it. And again, I'm now going to bring, now what I'm going to do now is work in the white spaces because if I bring the green over the pink, we're going to end up with mud. Mm -hmm. All right, so just being aware of your colors. If you're working with two colors that make a third color, so for example, your primary colors to make a secondary color, you can get away with mixing them. But I know that pink and brown, uh, pink and green, uh, pink and green will end up with brown, okay? Because I've essentially got the effect of three primary colours because the pink acts as the red tone, yeah. the green's the blue and yellow, and three primary colours make brown. So yeah, just be careful that you don't go over those areas. But you can see how we just, I'll take a little bit of that into this gap. And I want to take it pretty much all over the gaps. So wherever I've got a gap this time, I want a little bit of colour. And I'm happy for it to be this wet because I need that for the next part of the trick. All right, so I thought it would be good to show you this technique. And I've just spent the last try five minutes trying to open the product. I'll show you what I mean. So again, I'm just going to get rid of that excess at each end. Now, what I brought with me to put on here was a piece of what we call in the UK cling film. Mm -hmm. I think you guys in the States call it shrink wrap. OK, but it, I folded it up to bring it with me and I've spent the last five minutes trying to oh, undo it all. Never did you. But what I'm going to do is lay this straight on top of the wet ink and then I'm going to literally wrinkle it all up. So you can already see what it's doing to the ink underneath. It's like it's been in it, isn't it? Yep. So the more wrinkles, the more that, you know, the more of the effect you'll get. And then make sure it's all reasonably flat. OK, so have a look and see. You know, where the bigger lines are, you'll get a different effect to the smaller lines and then leave it. You have to be patient with this particular technique. It's, it needs to dry. And obviously, because I've got that cling film on there, it's a plastic element. We can't add the um, heat tool to it. Thank you, Jamie. I don't know what's going off with my words today. Do you know, it's really nice sometimes to have a voice in your ear that just gives you the right bit at the right time. So I'm going to put that to one side and leave it to dry. And we'll have a little look at the end of the show and see how it's doing. Uh, it might need a wee bit longer than that. But of course, I did one while I was playing at home. And this is the result you get when it's dry. Wow. Can you see how it's pushed the the actual pearlescent element, the mica, and where all those lines were that's made like the veining in it, it's like pushed it the mica into the... Uh, and it, it just looks as if it's like um, mosaic. You can see it there, absolutely gorgeous. Now, I've done this on a bigger sheet because I'm going to cut it down into pieces to um, form my project. So I did make a note of what pieces I need, and I've got my guillotine here at the ready. So we need a piece that measures um, five by seven. So I just need to bring out the extender arm there and I'm going to take it off at seven inches. This is for my project that we're actually going to put together. And then I also want it to measure five. So that's going to be the piece that I'm working with at the top. And then the same length that I've just cut off here I need two pieces that measure three quarters of an inch. So let me have a little look. I've got a half. Oh, that's too hard. Hang on. Take it down to one and a half inches. Take that bit off and then the disappearing. I'm going to have to just eyeball that bit, I think. Think how you could use all these scraps as well, yep. like strips for your background. Well, like I say, sometimes it's easier to do a full piece than mm -hmm. it is to try and do the technique on the little scrap pieces. And then again, I need one that measures uh, five inches. Okay. And again, those need to be three quarters of an inch. So if I just trim it down to one and a half inches. So I've only got a few little scraps there out of that bit. And then this one wants to be three quarters of an inch. So I'm just having a bit of a guess there because I've run out of measurements. It's near enough. So I pop that to one side. I'll we'll finish with that one. I'm and then what I've done is actually going. made a box for this one. So I've started popping some pieces together. This is my box lid. 
and I've just used that lovely green satin card and this is out of our luxury card packs again I use these a lot so that lovely dark green is going to be my matte layer to pop this on top and bring that green element out of it okay but before we do that I'm going to bring that same embossing folder back in that we've just used in the last demo and I'm just going to run this piece through the embossing folder to add another layer remember I said it was all about the layering we've got the colors in the background we've got that beautiful mica that's caused that veining I love it and then take your own advice Jan and put it in the right <laughs> way there we go I'm just going to pop that inside and it's a little bit bigger than the folder but we'll get the effect bring that midi back in and again it's just adding that extra little bit just taking it to that next level if you want to keep it flat absolutely fine but it's just taking it onto that next sort of level there and it's not done a lot to it but it has embossed into that beautiful design just that extra bit of detail just to catch the eye on top of the box you can see that detailing on the back there okay. well, it gives you the best of both worlds doesn't it because if you leave it unembossed with a folder you've got that full textured look that yep. the ink is giving you but then if you want to add that texture with a the folder then perfect you can there's no reason why you can't just keep building as i say on those layers and it's just adding interest you know if you don't have an embossing folder that fits the size of your project then don't worry about it you know there's no law that says it has to be done i'm just sort of giving you ideas so that one's going to go on the top of my gift box so many people are loving this whole demonstration of that background. That one's going to go on the lid here. So again, I've just got a little border all the way around. And then I've started laying the green pieces down so that we can pop these little bits. Now, if I was at home, I'd probably ink the edges of these. You know okay. that I like my inking, but I've not actually brought the inks to do those today. So however you want to work with them, and again, I've cut these just so that they fit a quarter of an inch less again. So we've got that eighth of an inch border all the way around. And the tape pen is more than enough to stick these pieces together. Because this one's dry now, it just behaves like normal cardstock. Mm -hmm. So uh, once it's dried out, you've got a nice surface to work with, with your tape pen there. So just to get those pieces in place. And I prefer to do this while my box is still flat. I just find it easier because once it's put together, you've got like a hollow part in the center. And when you start pressing on edges and things like that, you're not getting the same contact as you do when it's straight. And then again, you can use your wet glue if you prefer. I've just used the red line tape for speed because we're on air. And we're going to pop that one together. And I've already popped the, uh, the base somewhere safe. There it is. Put it in a safe place earlier. So I've just kept the base nice and plain in the white cardstock. And I've made the box out of the multi-purpose card. We're going to pop that together. And then I've just made a little embellishment using some scraps of the green tag dye that I have in my stash little bit of twine and just stamped a sentiment on there and again because we're going on to that effect with the different mediums mm -hmm. I'm going to bring in the tacky glue again you could pop this on foam pads if you wish but again I'm just going to go around with the tacky and actually pop that on the top here and again the tacky glue just needs a second to grab especially if you've got other mediums beneath it so just going to hold it in place for a second i've just added some little uh, enamel dots on there just to, to tie in the two colors yeah. and you can see how you know you can very easily make your gift boxes two sort of specific uh, color schemes or designs depending on what you're sending it to and you've got that gorgeous kind of marbling with that pearlescent element now if you did this with a spark link you'd get a very similar kind of thing because it would push the glitter and give you that veining. But if you did it with a plain ink, you're not going to get quite the same effect because you'd still get a little bit of lining in it from the cling wrap, but it wouldn't give that 
pushing that extra medium so we, it's left the ink behind and it's pushed the mica which is the pearlescent element to create all that design on it absolutely beautiful and then, as I say, we'll have a look at the one that we did at the end of the show. Remind me to have a look at that, although it might not be dry. It does okay. take a little while. I know when I've done anything like this, I normally leave it overnight, to be honest, to make sure it doesn't need... If you take the cling wrap off too soon and it's still wet, it will start and seep back into its places again. Whereas when it's dry, you can just peel the cling wrap away and it leaves all that veining in it. That looks absolutely fab. Love and that. I know so many of you are as well. So you can do exactly what Jan was doing using a selection of our pearlescent watercolour inks. So we've got 11 for you to choose from. I've got them all in front of me, all 11 of them. They are three for the price of two. You'll see all the colours. I tell you what, let's just do that quickly. We've got red garnet. <laughs> we've got cerulean blue. We've got holly green. We've got radiant orchid. We've got Ray of Sunshine, we've even got Lemon Glacier, we've then got Fiery Sunset, also got Nearly Navy, we've also then got Passionately Pink, and then we've got Spruce Green, and we've also got Purple Twilight. That's 11 for you to choose from. Each of these are £4.25 or $7.99 if you're platinum, it comes down to £3.40 or $6.39. And of course, you will get them at three for the price of two. So all of these will be across on the website, either shop the day or of course, go into the mixed media section in New Year, New Craft, where you've got up to 23% off. Right, let's have a look at a few incredible deals. Now, this is uh, one that uh, Jan's just looking at, and she looked at the uh, ones earlier on within Wake Up Call. Now, this one here, this is your three-piece embossing folder. Now, these are all 3D, £5.99 for all three of them. It's not a, a choosing one. You're getting all three of them, £5.99 or $7.95. Platinum price comes down to £4.79 or $6.36 for all three of these. Then we've also got our Silhouette Floral Dyes. These were also used by Jan with a wake-up call earlier on. £12.99 or $14.95. That's giving you a 65% saving as with that embossing folder collection. Platinum price comes down to £10.39 or $11.96 once again for all three sets and that's given you 15 dies in total. Then we're going to have a look at some stenciling and embossing. So this is a three piece once again, $9.99 or $12.95 but also with a 65% saving. Platinum price is $7.99 or $10.36. Not only have we got garden party stencil there, we've got Say It With Flowers embossing folder and stencil that just launched within October last year, and then Wisteria Collection. That is just launched, and that folder and stencil is included. So all three of them, $9.99, $12.95, or $7.99 platinum, $10.36 platinum. What about some additional watercolour paper and ink? and your pads, $9.99 or $19.99. Platinum price comes down to $7.99 or $15.99. You've got your premium 9x12 300 GSM cardstock bundle, which is in a pad, 20 sheets. You're also going to get a pigment ink pad and also your translucent clear ink pad. Lovely for doing your heat embossing. However, there's lots of techniques you can do when it comes to both of these pads. Then we've got an essential tool selection. This is your craft map blending tool and paintbrush. $9.99 or $14.99. It's giving you a saving of 30%. Platinum price comes down to $7.99 or $11.99. And I can tell you, before I joined Crafters Companion, I paid over £8 for a non-stick craft mat that was smaller than that one. So that is a phenomenal deal where you're getting the... the I think it's 12 by 19 or 13 by 19 inch. It's a big one. And you're also <laughs> going to be getting your rectangle blending tool with the foam pad as well. And then you're getting your top quality paintbrush as well. $7.99 or $11.99. And then we're going to have another look at embossing and stencil. This is a three pack once again. Absolutely adore the Nitwick collection. So within this one here, $9.99 
or $12.95. It's giving you a really good saving of uh, that whole lot. That whole lot is a 58% saving. Platinum price, $7.99 or $10.36. So you've got Knitwit, you've got your embossing folder with die. That's a six by six one and a die and a stamp within that one. That's your bottom left hand corner, but you're getting a lovely four by six 3D embossing folder on your bottom right. All three of them are within that bundle. So there you go. There's some cracking bargains for you to pop into your basket across on our website, of course. You can be there, crafterscompanion.co.uk.com or .eu. Uh, right, we're ready to have a look at these intense pigment stains. A few comments saying, uh, we have got, we've got Tess is saying, I'm a mixed media artist, so I'm so thrilled that CC are sharing so much of the mixed media. That's lovely to see you popping on. We've got Olga saying for this year, planning on starting to use my alcohol. Um, I think it's resins, want to learn to knit. I also crochet. It's going to be a nice selection of crafts for you to be doing throughout the year, for sure. Uh, Tess is also saying, once you let yourself start and play with all your mixed media options, you'll be hooked. Yep. I have a mixed media journal that has papers in it and that takes uh, all sorts of mediums well, so it's so much fun. It's a nice way of using what you make. So we saying nice background. Beth is saying gorgeous background. Stephanie is saying that was so cool, Jan. Gemma is saying wow, wow, wow. Christine Mahoney is also saying wow, that's beautiful. Evelyn saying I love it. Colette is saying gorgeous, Jan. And Deborah is saying uh, I don't think I need these for I didn't think I need these products, but Jan just showed me I do. <laughs> and Joanne, no, you don't use your double-sided dies within the midi, the midi. Just use them with your junior and your large Gemini. But right, let's have a look at these pigment stain um, inks. There we go. The word just totally escaped me there. <laughs> Two ninety-nine each or four dollars forty-nine. If you're platinum, they come down to three dollars fifty nine or two pound thirty nine they're also on a three for the price of two you can mix and match with what i showed you before and some of the other three for twos that are in the actual uh, category as well such as hunky dory so i've got six here in front of me there is a few others across on the website so starting off with this one here that i've got it's the regal purple so again this is just six of what's within that category you've got your regal purple that you can see here you've also then got your stormy gray then we're going to then be going into violet we're then going to be going into Bluebell, we're going to go into Citrus Lime, and then we're also going to come all the way down to Forest Green. Just to say that Citrus Lime is the colour that you also get within that Showstopper collection, that mixed media Showstopper collection. So it is that same Citrus Lime as well, so just keep that one in mind. As I say, there is more on the website as well, it's just a select few for you to have a look at. Two ninety nine each, or $4.49 each, three for the price of two, Platinum comes down to $2.39 or $3.59. Jan, what can we do with these ones? Right, so this is an ink again, and it's a very highly pigmented ink, which is where it gets its intense pigment stain from. So it's water-based. It behaves just like a lot of the other products we've used. The difference between that one and the one that we were using earlier is these don't have anything else in them. So right. whereas we had the mica in the pearlescent ones, this is just the ink itself. And because of the high pigmentation in there, you're going to get a really nice nice strong colour. So again very similar to sort of inks uh, that you might be more familiar with like our um, if any of you've got the aqua tints that we use so we don't sell them anymore but I know a lot of you will still have them in your stash. That kind of product but it's got so much more pigment in it okay. it makes it very sort of rich in colour. Now anything that you do with the watercolour things all the techniques that I've done watercolour earlier you can do this with. We're going to do something different with them now and we're going to fetch in. And again, it's one that's, you know, sort of used a lot. We're going to bring in the old shaving foam. Oh, yes. The first thing Jamie said to me when I got here this morning was, are you doing the shaving foam jam? And yes, it is such a cool technique. And honestly, I mean, you can see my brand there. There are other brands available, but it needs 
cheap as chips. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. Can't be as stuff, sweet I shop. Yep, uh, wherever you shop, you'll get it. And buy, you know, the cheapest one or the saver range, anything like that. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. It also makes your projects smell really nice oh, too, yeah, because you get an element of it left. Now I've just got. Um, the lid off one of my clear boxes that I've got at home. It's deep enough, it's about an inch deep. And you don't need masses. Remember that, I mean, you might not be used to using shaving foam, but it does swell up and expand. So when you spray this into your box, you don't need as much as you think you do. Okay, as long as you've got enough to go with the size of the piece of cardstock that you're going to work with. You can actually then start and smooth this out. So I'm just going to grab. I do wonder when I go into Asda and stock up on shaving foam, they must think, oh, he's obviously a way to tidy up or shave his beard. Unbeknown to them. No. You know, I'm actually using it just to put inks yeah. over the top and use it for crafting. It's like going in for the glycerin, isn't it? And they're thinking, you, you know, she would be a yeah. great cook. <laughs> ah, 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 ah. No, it's going in the craft room. So yeah, just spreading it out so that you've got sort of a fair, it's like icing a cake, it's quite therapeutic this. You know, like making meringue and things like that. Yeah, oh yeah. But don't eat it, no, please. Don't. don't, don't put it on top. Yeah, but you want it sort of a fairly even. It doesn't matter if it's not perfectly straight. I'm just going to grab another one of those wipes. Like marshmallow man and Ghostbuster. <laughs> And then what we're going to do is we're going to drop that ink into the shaving foam. So I'm just going to take any surplus off, keep all the tools nice and clean. I'm actually doing pretty well so far. I'm still clean. Pop the lid on that one, take that out of the way. And then I'm going to take those stains and I've got uh, regal purple and citrus lime. I thought they'd be a nice contrast together. So again, <coughs> excuse me, I'm just going to take the lid off. There's no fancy gadgets with these. There's no droppers. They literally just come straight out of the thing. And all I'm going to do is just tap or squeeze and just pop. You don't need masses of it. Put about six drops in. And then I'm going to do this, the other colour that's going to go with it, the purple one. And I'm going to pop that in as well. So again, one, two, three, four, five, six absolutely gorgeous colour and then you need an implement I usually use my pokey tools right, or just okay. something to agitate this now I don't want you to go mad with it because again you've got to be aware of what colours you're using and are they going to make mud so all I'm going to do is drag it through backwards and forwards through those colours to just sort of agitate them mm -hmm. so that they're not blobs anymore but try not to do it too much. It's sort of a little bit of trial and error as to how far you take it because you don't want to end up with just a load of sort of gunge in the middle. Right, yeah, yeah. And again, you know, the, the foam cleans off everything. It doesn't damage your tools whatsoever. And then again, I've got that same card from that pad because this is actually, you know, you might not think it's a water-based product, but clearly it's going to work with water and the stains are water-based. So we've got that lovely water uh, colour card. I'm just going to pop that on top over the ink and then press it in so that your card's made contact with all the foam. You want it to actually meet the foam all over. Okay, now I'm just going to grab a piece of kitchen paper at the ready. Clean up purposes. And then we're going to take this out. And then you need another implement. I've got my ruler here. All right, so they're all things. There's no fancy techniques. There's nothing that you've not already got. Take it out and it will pull out the shaving foam with it. And you think, oh my Lord, Jan, what have you done? Okay, so I'm going to pop it onto the kitchen paper. And then I use the beveled edge of my ruler and start at one end and just literally take the excess oh, shaving foam look at that. away and then I'm going to pop that back away from the original part of it because this will start and get a little bit muddy now again clean up the tools as you go brings everything back to how it was and again you've got the most gorgeous wow ink behind and this is pretty much it, it's damp but it's not wet through but again just i i don't know of any other technique that will give me that kind of background i've no. tried it with all sorts of things and i really don't know how else to do it and again every time will be different you wouldn't be able to recreate this for love no money now obviously you've got plenty left in here so you can keep dipping and making the backgrounds until this has basically become uh, mud mm -hmm. so you know you might go in again and re-agitate some of those larger 
blobs where it's squidged together and then go in again with a second piece don't waste it and then when you're finished all I do is take mine to the sink with some warm water and literally rinse it all down and it goes down the sink without any trouble so I'm going to leave that there for now and clear that out of the way later on this is just about dry it's not not wet at all okay and then you can start and make your projects out of it now the one i did at home i didn't have the same colors again as what we'd got here so the one that i did at home i'd got sort of like a a pinky color and oh, wow. this one was called tea rose so you can see i've got a very similar technique going on there i've just cut it down slightly but again exactly the same as what i just did with the two color inks lifted it out take the excess uh, shaving foam away and it just leaves that most gorgeous marbling just effect so because I've cut this one down we'll pop this one on the project and what I've done again is just kept it nice and simple I didn't want to go too far with the designs on the cards today so I'm going to pop it on a black mat this time which just makes it pop all right so we're just going to pop that one and before I do that I've actually done my sentiment on a piece of vellum because I didn't want to cover up all that gorgeous work that we've created so I've actually put some tape on the back ready to remind me because I'm the world's worst at forgetting this stage whether it's ribbon or vellum I usually end up forgetting to put it on so again just make sure it's about straight across the front there but a good backdrop for a baby girl card. Yep, yep. Again, depending on what colours you choose, you know, you can bring it in with all yes, your different yeah. designs that you've got. And then again, I'm just going to use that tape runner. It works beautifully with that watercolour card. If you wanted to use a wet glue at this point, I would be going again with that all purpose okay which I probably would use I do like wet glue when I'm working at home but obviously there's a little bit of drying time involved so when we're demoing we often go for the tape pens so again get that one stuck down same again on the back such a cool technique and then what I've done again, because we had those um, silhouette floral dies, they're a really nice go-to. Again, you've heard me talk about my box where I, d I have dies that never go away. I've got some dies and some embossing folders that never actually make it into the rest of the stash. And these are one of them again. So this is the Butterfly Meadow and you've got a series of different floral elements in here. So I've used some of my Black Centura Pearl for this. And I've got this one here and I've just got the little single one that I've die cut in some of that lovely sexy black Centura Pearl. Okay. And all I'm going to do, <laughs> make some giggle every time when I call it sexy black. I just think it's really, really sort of like, um, what's the word when opulent? What's he doing over there? Nothing. Nothing. Honestly. <laughs> Right, so again, just a little bit of glue on there and then I'm going to go with my tweezers and just slot this down the back here. Just again, offset against that background. That black's a real nice sort of contrast. And then... I might get into trouble for saying this, but if you love the idea of vellum sentiment wraps... Ooh. We might have something coming up. Have you in got the a next secret? Couple of weeks. Ooh. I know I'm launching them here in the UK on Hobby Maker. A week on Saturday. So that's all that I'm going to say. Gee, I can't get over it. I wish you guys could hear the rain. I, it's, it's so absolutely, loud. Absolutely, it? because we've got a flat roof above the studio. It's horrendous. I don't I even look out the door. I think I'm going to need my canoe to get <laughs> home in tonight. <laughs> yeah. I don't know about the car. But there again, you know, just nice and simple. Uh, that was the one that we did with the purple and the green. So again, you know, you could have used a little bit more masculine with the purples and the greens. So again, you could have used that one. You can use any of the colour families and just keeping it nice and simple with that sentiment and those floral designs there. That's absolutely Yep, And as I say, I it smells it. lovely with the shaving foam on it. Perfect. And you think right. of all the different colours, the different combinations, all of these things that you can be doing, you know, whether it's with these or a few other mediums as well. The intense pigment satin 
The um, one that we've got here, the one that's on, on your screen at the moment, it does say forest green. Uh, there is a selection of different colours. I've got six in front of me. There is a few others on the website, but we've got an abundance of items from Cosmic Shimmer as well as Hunky Dory that are all in a three for the price of two. So these ones, each of these individually are £2.99 or $4.49. Platinum comes down to £2.39 or $3.59. They're all on that three for the price of two. And just to reiterate, rate as well you can absolutely mix and match with these three for the price of two with these three for the price of two or your hunky dory shimmer mess as well if you wanted to so you've got there so six there that i've got to show you i've got a few more across on the website as well have a look there while you're there crafterscompanion.co.uk.com or .eu have a look on both shop the day and then also have a look at your uh, new year new sale where you're going to find these as well as many many items on with up to 23 percent off when it comes to these items smooth Rightio. Now, we had an incredible busy day yesterday with Leanne and Ben. When is it not busy when Leanne's not in? But you know when Leanne's in, in, most of the time it's because she's got something spectacular. And we had the brand new launch of the next instalment of Academy of Colour. This is all about the cute character. So we've got the mice there, we've got the cats, we've got the fairies and so much more. Now this one here, $33.99 or $44.95. Platinum comes down to $27.19 or $35.96. Now as I said, this is the next instalment of the Academy of Colour. You can go back on to Crafters TV YouTube channel yesterday and re-watch what Leanne was showing you, what she was talking about, and the different things that you will learn. You can absolutely use this as a standalone collection if you so wish. However, the whole purpose of the Academy of Colour is exactly that. It's an academy of education for you to go back on. So even when it comes to our new launch here, you're going to find that Leanne will start and she will use elements or she will do ideas and top tips that she's done previously within the Academy of Colour, but bring this in conjunction with the cute characters. That being said, absolutely, you can still just use this box as a standalone. You get six more of your Geo Tip alcohol markers. So these are different colours from the previous Academy of Colours. They are colours that you will uh, notice that are familiar within your alcohol, Spectrum Noir, alcohol pen range, Tri Blends, Classics, etc. But they are new to this Academy of Colour. And then you've got three of your Geo Tip aqua pens and then inside so there is your card so once the actual academy lesson education lesson goes live with leanne you're just going to scan that you can go back and watch the previous education lessons leanne's done by scanning the qr code on the back there but then inside this is what it's all about for this one it's all about the cute characters so she will talk you through and show you how you can do the blending she's going to show you how you can create that roundness when it comes to the fur not just by blending and shade build up but by going in with likes of effects such as stippled effect all these different things if you've seen Leanne yesterday with Ben you'll know exactly the sort of things that you'll be seeing when it comes to the lessons for this you do get your divider as well, which will go into your folder that you got with the original Academy of Colour. You do get more of your watercolour card. You do get more of your alcohol card as well. What I always say when it comes to a new launch of Academy of Colour, certainly this time round, we've got some really, really good deals on full packs of watercolour card, A4 sheets, and also your Nina card stock. Have a look at them, stock up on them, because you know when it comes to the Academy of Colour, once you start on that journey, or you continue on that journey with Leanne, you are going to be using a lot of it. So you can then be taking what you've learned in with the Academy of Colour with Leanne, and then you can start to transition that into your daily stamping and colouring as well. If you're a brand new stamper colourist, 
This is absolutely perfect. If you're an experienced colorist, then you will find this very, very beneficial as well. Just different ideas, different takes, and things that you can start to transition into your coloring. And as we always say as well, because it's always a question you will get asked, you know, is it good for the, the youngsters, you know, granddaughters, grandsons, etc., etc. As Leanne would always say as well, if they're at an age where they can concentrate and they can follow along and they can learn of course, course at a young age you know they're just oozing in all that knowledge and inspiration then absolutely of course they can and it's a lovely thing to do together for sure so that was really really busy yesterday it's the brand new academy of color box it is the cute characters 33.99 or 44.95 platinum comes down at 27.19 or 35.96 dollars 96 Right, we're going to give you an opportunity to check out your baskets and when we come back, we're going to jump all the way back to our mixed media and Jan. Welcome to Crafters TV. With more than 35 hours of live shows each week, it's your home for all things craft. We shine the spotlight on new and innovative crafting products with live tutorials and demonstrations. Join our family of craft experts where fun happens every day. Come on, that was really funny, Ben. You did it was better than your I'm a gnome and I live in a caravan. <laughs> I am a gnome and I live in a caravan. <laughs> <laughs> Can we yeah, flip that? Yeah. Everybody's gone surfing, surfing USA. Get creative and craft along. With our amazing deals, your next craft project is just a click away. Tune in live seven days a week, or you can watch us on Catch Up at CraftersCompanion.com, Facebook, or our YouTube channels. You can chat to us, craft along, and meet new friends by joining our online crafting community. You entertain us, you give us a community to talk, you know, in the chat. That wouldn't happen without you guys. It's like um, Crafters Companion is magical. There's magic here. There's a show for every type of crafter, from first-time dabblers to full-time makers. Crafters TV, create every day. We get to know people from places and walks of life that we wouldn't come across in our everyday life if it wasn't for um, Crafters TV and doing what we do. I got so many lovely comments from people when I started doing the presenting and it was just really such a lovely um, feeling and it's nice that people keep messaging in, you know, we see the same, same people and we know you can build up that kind of relationship with those people so it's just the fact that people like what we do and they're pleased and I do love it when people send us photographs of the items they've made. We talk about customers but really the going as a customer come out as a friend. The support that I get is amazing, the messages I get are amazing. Me personally it is personal interaction. I've never had the best of health. I've always been open about that uh, with our viewers at Crafters TV. So many people are in the same situation as me health-wise. Other people have got a completely different health issues. They understand and they relate to what I'm going through, what others are going through. So whether we interact on a crafting basis or whether we interact on a health basis, a personal basis, we're all there to support one another. It is incredible. The reaction of viewers when they come to meet us is worth all of the, the early mornings when we have to get up for our early morning shows. Some of the customers come on as craft ambassadors and things like that, craft along with us and being able to actually chat with them on air. I love it, I really love that connection with them. We've had lots of uh, shows where we've done like um, craft alongs especially, where we've had viewers craft along with us. We had a particular viewer, Joy, who joined us once before and she literally made me cry on air and Jo uh, because the things she said about us it really was quite humbling that there are people out there that watch us and and invite us into their living rooms and really treat us like family so much love for this show as I knew there would be I was teasing you the other day about it as well um, Marcia saying wow beautiful I love those flower dyes too referring to what Jan was just doing a minute ago we've also got Heidi saying I'm in love with this card it will be perfect for the cards I make for others absolutely it would Linda saying beautiful card Jan Linda saying love the great demos I've also got Di saying I absolutely love Jan she is so creative 
Uh, so many people saying exactly that. Deb is saying, Jan, this technique is just amazing. Tess is saying, all the shows this week are phenomenal. And eight, Tracy, Kakaka, Kakaka, Ku, Ku, Kaka, I, I apologize. I don't know why I even attempted that one. Eight, Tracy. It's, it sounds just like, yeah, some, something's happening with me. But eight, Tracy. Let's, I'll just not go down that other road. It's just saying, hello, all my crafty friends. Well, hello to you, even though I can't pronounce your... I don't actually know if it is your second name or if it's your YouTube or Facebook handle. I'm not sure, but hi to you too. And Rhonda say, can't wait to see what they do with the... Oh, someone's jumping ahead. Rhonda saying, I can't wait to see what they do with the softer side craft along. Mmm, our Becky will be in. Uh, not today, of course. It's not Friday, is it? But yeah, that's something to keep an eye out when it comes to the website. Uh, right to you. So, um, we've got Primer, Pr Prism Glimmer Mist on the screen at the moment. So, Jan's going to be using Cosmic Shimmer Airless Mister. So, I'll go over what you can go for when it comes to Hunky Dory across on the website. So, ignore this. $4.99 or $6.99. These are all on a three for the price of two. $3.99 or $5.59. And you can mix and match as well if you want to. So we've got our Hunky Dory Glism, uh, Glimmer Mists. You've got Cherry Pie that you can see within that one there. You've got Baby Pink as well. You've then also got your Ultraviolet. Then you've also got your Sunshine Yellow. And then you've also got your Apple Green when it comes to these. Now, I know when it comes to these ones here, these are very, very limited in stock, so please keep that one in mind. But they are, of course, £4.99, £6.99 or three for the price of two. And then we're going to have a look at our Cosmic Shimmer. These are going to be our um, airless misters that Jan's going to be using in a moment. We've got a selection, once again, that are all on three for the price of two. Mix and match till your heart's content. £5.50, all of these are individual, or $8.25. If you're platinum, that's then going to come down to £4.40 or $6.60. So, well, we've got our range. So, these aren't in our order. So, I'll just read them out in my order. I think that would probably be best because then I'll just confuse Charlotte. And I don't want to do that. And, and Jamie as well, he's saying. So, <laughs> uh, we've got... Poppy Parade, we've got Amber Lights, we've got Green Grape, we've got Pacific Point, we've got Pine Green, and we've got Flirty Pink. Flirty? It is Flirty. Yeah, it is definitely mm -hmm. Flirty. Uh, for a moment there, I thought, am I reading a word that's not even there? Flirty Pink. Flirty so, Pink. Flirty Pink. All of these individually. You can see them across on the website as well as the other three for the price of two. Mixing and matching. These are... It's one of those when Jamie first came... Well, when he first launched them elsewhere and then came here with them, it's like, why has no one thought about the concept of the, the bottles, the jars before? Because it's such a great idea, isn't it? It is. It is, absolutely. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to very briefly touch on the Hunky Dory ones first, just in case anybody's interested. But we have got a very limited stock, so I haven't used these in a demo as such. But again, this is actually a spray mister. It's got the little nozzle in the top. It's a water-based ink again. And it does have, I was just having a look on the bottle. I don't know whether it's mica or glitter in them, but it does have some kind of... Um, glimmer in it hence the name the glimmer mist and it's because it's got the mixing ball in if ever you've got the little mixing ball inside it means that there's something heavier than the water in there whether that's glitter or as i say whether it's mica in them i'm not a hundred percent sure this is not a product i've used a lot um, so yeah those are available but there's not a lot of them left okay, okay. so if you're interested in those have a look and then the ones that I'm going to use are the Cosmic Shimmer ones again. Now, I've brought these to you before, and I know Jamie's demonstrated mm -hmm. them, I think, hasn't he, as well? Yes. And, and this, like Craig says, the technology behind this, the reason the airless bit comes in, and a lot of you, if you've used spray misters before, you will know that you get very frustrated with the nozzles blocking. 
don't know what it is about them it's just something in the way that the format is of, of a spray mister and you'll start working with them and then all of a sudden the nozzle blocks you end up with it under the tap trying to wash it out yeah. and all sorts of problems and then it just gets stuck in a box and you don't use it anymore the airless fact means that they will not clog and that brings in a whole different sort of um you know, play it does, game hit play it? when you come to, to to using them because the last thing you want is to buy something, it not work, and you just end up with it sat in a cupboard forever and a day. So it says create amazing colourful ink effects, airless bottle, fine mist, spray from any angle. So you don't have to worry about whether you've got it upright, you know, to spray it. You can spray it face down, whatever. And I'm going to do that for you in a second. So again, it's just a pump action spray, and I'll show you how these work in a second. I just wanted to bring in these are some that I did when I first brought these to uh, to crafters uh, just to give you an idea of the colors so you've got that green galore now these are a matte finish these have got no extra sparkle in them at all so it's just the water-based ink right so to spritz them basically the theory is is the closer you go the denser the spritz the further away you go the finer the spritz and then you'll get the drops coming from it as well so two do and I'll show you that when we spritz them out I'm going to use this one in a second the amber lights Pacific Point, beautiful sort of teal Isn't blue. It gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. The flirty pink is a proper sort of flamingo pink there. Yes. Really, really good. And I love the poppy parade. Oh. Absolutely gorgeous. A real true poppy poppy red there. So those are the colours that we've got available at the moment. There was a larger range than this originally, but I think these are the ones that we've got the stock of um, at the moment. So I'm going to pop those to one side. I've got my amber lights yeah i was just trying to remember what it was i've also brought my little spray box from home okay which is just an old cardboard box with some kitchen paper inside and what i'm going to do is i'm going to take one of the pieces again that cardstock from that same pad i said to you that you know we're going to be using that pretty much through the whole of the demos all right fit for purpose and then i'm going to take you don't really need to shake it that much because it is just ink in this one there's no uh, no sediment in it that's going to um, drop to the bottom and again the further away you go the lighter the spray the closer you go to it the more dense it will get so i don't want to come too far away because i don't want to come outside the box and end up with the desk being a nice shade of uh, yellow so we're just going to go a bit closer just gentle presses and you can see how that colour built it absolutely gorgeous. And I like how you get that fine mist and then some of those larger droplets yeah. as well. OK, and then once you're happy with that, we're going to take that heat tool and just give it a blast. Now, you can leave it to dry on its own if you wish, but if you're going to use it in a project, just give it a little blast and to stop it running too far, I usually just grab something to hold it in place. And just hold it down. OK, and you're going to get a really nice background to work with. Now, you can again, you can do all those other things on here. You can stamp with it. On top of it, you can sort of die cut it. You could use it to make your flowers again. So all those things I mentioned earlier, we can do exactly the same. You do get a nice matte finish on this one. So, you know, if you're wanting to stamp over the top of it, it's not going to interfere with any of the mica that are in some of the other products. So again, just, and if you've got some really, really sort of wet areas that you're wanting to hurry up, if you dab them, you'll get a different look again because it's taking some of that color out of them. Because Jan's very impatient and I, I hate waiting for things to dry, honestly. But you can just see where those actual droplets if you heat the other side of it, it should help it flatten down again. OK, and then we'll move the box out of the way. And you can see there how we've got a beautiful sort of background piece. And again, the droplets have just sort of started pushing away those larger droplets. So you've got like a really nice dark outline around the splodge and then a lighter element in the middle where it's sort of played with the ink. 
you can see those sort of like areas where it's just sort of formed like a, mm -hmm. an extra. Now, again, this is one where you'd struggle to, to replicate it because if I sprayed it again, you might get those droplets in different places. So that's the actual misters. And as I say, you've got that beautiful colour range depending on what you want to, um, to work with. And then we're going to take a second piece of card. And again, I've been naughty with this because I'm going to bring in... Um, this is something that I've been asked oh. about a lot. <laughs> Contraband. Now, we don't sell this again, OK? This is actually one that I've had a very, very long time. And you can get them on the internet. And it is what's called a jelly plate. And it is just like a big slab of, like, jelly, basically, silicon. I've it comes one of these for ages. with a protective coating on it, which you keep on it to protect the surface. And then you can take the back one off and stick it to your mat. I'm just going to leave it on there for ease at the minute. Uh, now, what I will do is pop some white underneath it and you'll be able to see what I'm doing better than the grid on the, uh, the mat there. So you can see there. Now, this is a way of transferring mediums to a piece of cardstock. So this works brilliantly if you want to do reverse stamping. So, for example, if you have... Um, say the little snowman stamps uh, from some of the Christmas rangers mm -hmm. and you've got a snowman looking this way. If you stamp it onto here and then put your cardstock on and lift it, he will be looking the other way. So you can get that back to back look. It also works great if you're wanting to do reflection. So if you imagine you've got a, a sort of a, a midline here and maybe you'd stamped a set of trees if you stamp those trees on here and then pop this the other way, you're going to get the flip. Because you've actually stamped it once and you're taking it off a second time, you're going to get that reverse image. So there's lots of different things that you can do with stamping. And I will try, if I remember, next time I'm doing a stamping show, I'll try and incorporate that for you to see. So what I'm actually going to do with this, I want to use a stencil. Now, we've got some stencils on the show. And of course, I didn't have those in my kit, so I've just grabbed a stencil, which just happens to be an all over dot. All right. So any of your stencils that you've got in your stash. Now, normally when we stencil, I'm going to get the dots. OK, so I'm going to put the if I used an ink applicator with my ink and popped it through here, I'd take this away and the cardstock would stay white where the stencil is yeah and it would have the yellow where the dots are now i didn't want that i wanted the reverse of that i wanted the yellow where the stencil is and the dots to stay light now the only way you can do that is by doing that second sort of generation again so i've brought in some honey pot ink which was probably the closest i could get to that gorgeous cosmic shimmer product that we'd got and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to pop this all over that gel plate. So this is going to be my carrier. Right, OK. All right, so we're just going to pop this on. And then you can either use your Spectrum Noir brayer if you have one. If you don't, there are other brands out there. Mine isn't a Spectrum one. Mine's actually a softer one that, again, I've had for a very long time. And all I'm going to do is just take the excess off here. I have no idea what that bit is, but we don't need it. looks like a dead fly. Looks like it's in the resin. There we go. Don't know who you are, but you can go away. All right. And then we're going to pop this one over the top. OK, so I'm going to press that one just in gently. And I'm going to use my brayer again over the top just to seal it. And then very, very lightly. You don't need a lot of this because you don't want it to seep underneath. I'm just going to do a very light spritz. <laughs> too, too much. OK, and again, I'm going to take this over the top. Now, the first print that we take, I'm just going to get another piece out of my pad. You'll get two for the price of one with this. So the first print that we're going to take out of it, we're literally going to soak up some of that ink that's already on. So pop it down and just apply some pressure. I always keep one hand on it so it doesn't move. And this is actually going to lift the ink that's on the top. OK, so when we actually peel this one back, we've got just an abstract pattern. That's not the bit that I actually want. And then if we take this one away now, 
and I'll come back to that in a second. And then I'm going to take the piece that I want to work with and pop that in here. So this has now actually removed the dots aren't there anymore. Right. The ink is where the stencil was, if that makes yeah, sense. Yeah. Because when we've just lifted this one, we lifted the dots out of the equation. Uh -huh. So they've gone off the gel plate. All we've got left now is the background. OK, so when I lift this one, just give it a really good press all over. Make sure it's all made contact with that plate and then lift it. We're actually going to get the background element oh, wow. with the dots missing. So does that make sense in that you're getting sort of the reverse aspect? All right, because that first one lifted the dots out of the stencil, it's just left behind what was trapped underneath the stencil. All right, so it's clever stuff. And again, it's something that you need to play with. Mm -hmm. If you do have one of those and you want to have a go with it, just have a play. Get some pieces of card. They don't have to be this big. Chop them up and just have a play. And I'm just going to talk you through what I did with those to make my card. I've gone for craft card this time. I've actually got my piece that we spritzed. I've got my piece that we did exactly the same with the stencil so cool. and then just to finish off that one something that i haven't brought in yet is the stamping foam that we brought out with our heat tool so just i thought i'd mix and match these and i'm just looking at the clock there it's ticking away isn't it, it does so i might have to just talk through this one rather than put it together but what i've done is i've got hundreds and hundreds of buttons at home i've got big jars of them all color you, you, you won't be surprised to know that they're all in color jars craig yeah. so i thought right rather than trying to get them all on here and keep them together i've just got a piece of card i've popped some tape on it and i've stuck loads of them to here slightly bigger than what i need to do so i've got my piece of paper ready and i'm going to use brown ink i've got a quick dry ink pad first thing we need to do is actually warm up our foam all right so you're going to apply heat to the foam until it's sort of warm to touch and what this does, if you haven't seen the foam before, it makes it a bit more pliable. And then it will take on the impression of anything that you pop it onto. So for example, you might have some paper clips. You could take an impression of paper clips. You might have a piece of lace. You could press the lace onto it. Anything that will leave some texture or some impression. It could be a set of alphabet letters. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It could be a stencil. It could be a die. It could be an embossing folder. The list is literally goes on and on forever. So you just want to get it to a point where it's reasonably warm. And I've got our Charlotte counting down in my ear now, bless her. So I'm like, I feel as if I'm racing against the clock now. But it does need to be warm enough to sort of take that impression. And then once we've got it to a level, I'm going to go for it and see. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn that warm side now. And then you need quite a lot of pressure just on top of it. So it's best to do this standing up. And I'm going to press it into those buttons. Now, if it's not warm enough, it won't have worked properly. But we'll hope and pray that I've had the heat tool on it long enough. And then what it's going to do, hopefully, is make the impression here. You can just see, yep. And then this acts now as your stamp. So I'm just going to smear this over the top. Such a cool thing to use. OK. Just gone a little bit heavy handed. And then this can be your stamp. So you can actually pop it down onto here. Great and again, use. just apply pressure. And the best bit about this is, A, the ink will clean off because it's water-based ink. So a little bit of your wet wipe or a wet cloth, the ink's going to clean off. And then when you reheat it, it will go flat again. Genius, so unless you particularly want to keep this impression and actually keep it for future use, you can clean it, heat it up, and it will go flat again. You've got two sides, so you can have a different impression on each side. There are four pieces in the kit, which gives you eight sides in total. So what I was planning to do with this, because I can just see time ticking away, is cut this down slightly. And I was going to mat and layer onto here with my buttons. And then I've just got a little sentiment. So this was going to go on here. 
and literally just create our card blank. But I'm going to leave it there because I can see time oh, ticking away. Morning. And we've still got things to do, haven't we? Yeah, we need to. <laughs> if uh, we we'll give you just a minute or I so. I made one unholy mess. <laughs> if you can line up your demos that oh. you've done and you literally will have a, a minute or so to get your votes in. Poor right, uh, Rebecca. Let me move all that out this of the way. I'm not uh, going to include that quick. last one then because that wasn't actually finished. But no we've problem. got three nice ones. Yeah, we've got uh, three on. nice ones, haven't we? So, top of the show then, we had a look at those tricolour aqua. Those were Spectrum Noir watercolour pens that we added the glycerin to. And then we popped it through the embossing folder and added some gilding wax. So that was number one. Number two was actually those lovely pearlescent inks by Cosmic Shimmer. And we had, can you just see how it's picked up that veining? You can. I will have a look at the one that we've done and see how it's getting on um, to create that sort of, and then we popped this through an embossing folder as well. So that was number two. And number three was the shaving throw with those beautiful uh, pigment stains to create that marbling effect. And number four was going to be the one that we've just done, which is in pieces. So I'm not going to include that one in the, um, in the vote. So if you want to have a look at those and then when mm -hmm. we just come back before we finish and I'll take the, this stuff and see how this one's doing. Perfect, excellent, Okey there dokes. you go. So you literally have a minute or so to get your votes in. That was the airless misters that Jan was using there. So she was using the amber lights. There is, uh, I've got six of them here. You've got a big selection of other mediums that are all under the three for the price of two that you can mix and match. But these ones here individually, £5.50 or $8.25. If you're platinum, that comes down to £4.40 or $6.60. Pine green, amber lights, green grape, Pacific Point, Flirty Pink and Poppy Parade. It's the six that we've got that you'll find across on the website. So that is those ones. And then what we're going to do is we're going to have a very quick look at our showstopper. So we looked at that in a lot of detail when it came to wake up call this morning but of course you've still uh, seen that Jan's used elements of it within this show so this is your mixed media showstopper deal now you are going to get everything that you can see within this bundle here it's 10 pieces in total you're going to be saving 40 percent on that today's price 40 pound or 60 dollars that's going to include your premium watercolor cardstock that you can see here you are also going to get your paint markers which are the dual tones you're going to get silver gild and your tricolour aqua pens are the floral meadow. You've got your Spectrum Noir reinker, which is blue, black, TB9. You've got your Cosmic Shimmer pearlescent watercolour ink, cerulean blue. You're getting, You're getting there. I'm getting there. You've also got your Cosmic Shimmer pigment satin, which is your citrus lime. You're also going to get your four spritz bottles. You're also going to get your blending tool, circle blending tool, two replacement foams. And you're also going to be getting your uh, egg shape blending tools as well. So lovely selection. If you are platinum, it's going to come down to £32.48. Right here, we've got one live show to go for uh, today. If you are watching live, that's going to be in a couple of hours' time, where it's uh, beautiful beginnings. So once again, we're going to go back to the basics, sort of, and have a look to see what's going to be created within that show. And I say we are, it's not going to be me. I will be on this side. Jan, what are we going to be having a look at? We have got those beautiful panel embossing folders on, which I showed you briefly this morning, and you voted that one card of the show this morning. We've also got the delicate lace edgeables, which are those sets of three different edgeables that all go together and work beautifully. Mm -hmm. And then I've also brought you the whole collection of the say, sorry, signature Say It With Flowers. Uh, so we've got that on as well. Those are the three main products on there. And there are as always lots of sort of follow up products yes. that work with yeah. them. And just a quick note before we finish off, Craig, um, I just wanted to reinforce again for anybody that wasn't watching earlier, if you're investing in that starter kit this morning you get one of the it might mm -hmm. be a different color I've just grabbed a couple out of the box but you get one of the pearlescent inks and you also get one of the pigment stains and you get the little mini misters so this in your mini mister becomes effectively one of these mm -hmm. 
Okay. So you can spray the ink out and spray it and get that spritz in. Same as you can with the pearlescent one, a few drops of that in your mister and it becomes a spray again. Brilliant. So it's a different way of applying the ink to what we've okay. done today. And that's purely just, you know, if you're buying into any of the collections, fair enough, but you've actually got the um, opportunity to do that yeah. with that starter kit. And then just finally, before we go, I did say I'd do a reveal. This was not quite dry, but it has done enough that if we take oh, that wow, cling wrap away look at that. still a little bit wet in the middle there but you can see how it's pushed that mica to create that veining in it it's still a you wee bit wet yeah. i would have left it a bit longer at home but you can just see that result there where it's it's a really fun one to play with so cool okay so cool uh we've got a winner and i have to say i loved all three of them it was my favorite it goes to number three Excellent with the stains, with the, with yeah. the, the good old shaving foam. I love yeah. that one. Yeah. I Thank love you that very backdrop. much, guys. There you go. So that's number three. So that's going to go up against Jan with a wake up call. <laughs> and it's also going to go up against Jan in Beautiful Beginnings. Beautiful Beginnings, six o'clock here in the UK, 1 pm Eastern Time, 10 am Pacific Times. Jan just uh, explained there what she's going to be having a look at when it comes to that two hour show. Everything that you'll have seen throughout the show, a lot of the things anyway, you will find across on our website. Website, have a look on Shop the Day, but also have a look at that 23% uh, saving section, which is all about New Year, New Craft. It's all there on the website, crafterscompanion.co.uk.com.eu. Thank you to Rebecca for your helping hand within the comments, and we will see you all with Rachel, who'll be on the comments later on for Beautiful Beginnings. We'll see you then.